G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video. And here we go with the last race of the last online championship of Gran Turismo Sport. This race really sort of marks a, a really big milestone in the Gran Turismo Sport, uh, not even the Gran Turismo Sport, the Gran Turismo franchise. Gran Turismo Sport was definitely built on online racing and online championships and this is the last of those. The last of the game. The end of an era. So after that impeccable warm-up, we go out for qualifying for the final event, the final online event. As you can see by now, the track we're at is Alsace Village. A bit of a strange track to finish up GT Sport at, but it's the track that we are at today. It's also a strange circumstance in which we're finishing up, because of course we're at a tuning championship, which has never really been big in Gran Turismo Sport. So, a little bit strange. It's definitely not the... Definitely not the send-off the game probably deserves, but I'm not really complaining because I actually happen to quite like Alsace in the way this car feels. Uh, we sort of delay our pit exit there in hopes to actually sort of get with the, the uh, distinct boys there, but I sort of misjudge it and I get out way ahead of them. It's alright. And I kind of just accept, you know what, let's not bother with all that. I can't be bothered slowing down because I'll probably just get caught in it, end up losing the slipstream, which I happen to always do. So we're just going to do our qualifying lap on our own in the clear air, which is where I did all my practice laps anyway. So I'm definitely not, definitely not that disappointed about missing out on the slipstream. It was kind of, if I get it, cool, but if I don't, I'm not going to make an effort. But we definitely, once again, must extend a massive thank you to AMS Dude for providing the tune we are using today. The only asterisk I have on that is I messed up the final drive uh, on the gearbox. So I'm actually running a slightly shorter gearbox overall. All my gears are close together and sort of are, are a lot shorter. I have to change gear a lot sooner than everyone else um, because I, I have a too small a final drive. Uh, but it didn't really prove to put me at any real big pace disadvantage, so I didn't even—I honestly didn't even notice until after the race. And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> or oh, actually, someone pointed it out. Tez pointed it out. Actually, you've got the wrong gearbox." I'm like, "Oh, dear, that's uh, a little bit embarrassing." But it's all good. AMS dude is the underpinnings for everything. I think he's going to be, uh, you know, one of the big influential people for Gran Turismo 7, especially if the tuning is the way going forward. But anyway, this is the end of the outlap. I've left the outlap in to discuss all that tuning stuff. Uh, but this is this is the this is the start of the last qualifying lap, the last flying lap that we are going to do, or oh, the last uh, sort of the, the beginning of the last session of qualifying. We just wait for the cars ahead to go, and the, get a, we get a blue flag for the distinct people. That's definitely my cue to get a move on and sort of get right out of the way. And that's exactly what we do to begin this uh, qualifying lap at Alsace Village. Get it into that first apex, that last downshift to second, just helping with that sort of extra bit of rotation, heading into the corner there, heading up the next part of the straight. Uh, it's all, all flat out, easy flat here, just maximising each gear, uh, sort of revving right to the limit, but don't let it hit the limiter. Easy flat through turn two, and then just braking on the second of the arrow boards on the left-hand side, turn it into turn three. The track tips away from you on the exit there, so it can be really easy to get caught out on that awkward curb on the exit there. Turn four is easy flat with this tune on the car. Normally it's a, a feather of the throttle with an understeery setup because we can run a very good tune. It's easy flat braking just before the banner on the uh, sort of over the top of the track. The track has a nice trough on the apex of turn five there. Easy flat. Uh, through turn six as well and then heading up to turn seven look on the right hand side braking just on the start of the arrows and you turn in at the same time which makes that particular corner a really difficult one to get right and then heading through turn eight 50 meter board turn in and lift off the throttle as we turn into the corner and you can commit back to the throttle straight away and make it all the way to the exit of the corner as we do there easy flat through turn nine as well and then this is one of the difficult braking zones on the track the back of the car wants to rotate away from you so you have to be prepared to deal with that and then braking just before we meet the apex of the left hander into the right hander there make sure you get it slowed up enough and rotated hay bales on the right is your turn in marker uh, for the turn 12 up the hill we begin to go up over the crest through turn 13 which is that shallow right hander there and this shallow left hander here is turn uh, turn uh, 14 
braking just on the side of the kerb. Turn 15. Make sure we get nice and tight back over to the right to take the left hand as fast as we possibly can, which leads out onto the straight out of the final turn. And that is a lap of Alsace Village in the Mazda Atenza. Very good. Okay. And I'm perfectly satisfied with that 156.9. I immediately go and mess up turn one, so this lap is going to already be no improvement. But a 56.9, it's right, sort of right on my goal. I wanted to get a 56 in the qualifying session. I was able to achieve it. Wow, Atom, mate. Well done. Well bloody done, mate. That's pole position, baby. And yes, obviously, big congratulations to Atom for taking out his first top split pole. You know he can do it now, so we're definitely excited to see what he can do in the future. As for us, our qualifying time is good enough for P8. And for the last time in Gran Turismo Sport, we meet ourselves on the grid. I wish we actually did meet our cars and not the loaded tarmac in between the first two. Uh, but there we go. We finally get to see Atom on pole position, baby. Normally it's taken out by Andrew or McEwen or Twitchy. Uh, but today it's Atom. Definitely well and thoroughly deserved, mate. Good, good on you. We had McEwen in P2, Noodles in P3, and then we have the Distinct Boys finishing up the top five or the top six there. We've got tw uh, Twitchy in P5, Tez in P4, and Andrew finishing in P6 as well. And as a little sort of bit, bit of eye candy there, we have that beautiful Marlboro livery, Supercars throwback livery to the Holden dealer team, and then another throwback livery for myself in P8, obviously, Scotty McLaughlin's Supercar Volvo. All right, you can do this. Giving myself a little pep talk for the final time on an online championship in Gran Turismo Sport. Let's get this underway. We sort of move off the rolling start with a little bit of a blunder. We shift up too many gears, so we actually start in third, which gets us a poor launch down the straight. A little bit of weaving to warm up the tyres, but let's see if we can recover any distance into turn one here. We're going to have the slipstream of Brocky. Brocky was very quick in the practice, actually. He was sort of racing Andrew, racing Twitchy. So there's definitely potential there to try and follow Brocky up through the field, but that's honestly not my goal at this particular stage. Uh, my goal, honestly... A lot of the time is to finish where I qualify and especially given this particular split today quite a stacked top split at least the first half of the grid is is a pretty stacked because you have McEwen there as well Brocky is sort of a relative newcomer to online championships as well he normally does league racing mainly but he's dipped into the road to GT7 series and he's definitely a force to be reckoned with. I definitely think he should be doing FIA. The three distinct boys obviously. Oh dear, there's a bit of a mistake from Brocky there. He's run a little bit wide off turn five. Really easy to do, especially with the cold tyres at the start of the race. So let's see what that those dirty tyres actually does for him and the answer is going to be not too much because He's just going to lose time. He's going to be out of Tez's slipstream at this particular stage now. And he's just going to be understeering through this really long right hand of where grip is your best friend. So if you don't have your best friend, you're really nowhere. Look at that. Some good life advice too. Look at him rejoin the track. I can tell you that was millimetres away from taking me out there. I've got Sub-Zero, my R4M teammate behind me. And he makes the, a very good uh, teammately decision to stay behind me. Even though I was slightly slow off the corner, it was due to me trying to avoid Brocky. I definitely didn't want to cross paths with him and get taken out on the opening lap. Because I would have been absolutely livid if that is what happened there. So I'm a, I was a little bit slow there. But Sub-Zero, he definitely makes the right choice and just sort of lets me, lets me stay ahead there. Uh, the Distinct Boys have sort of changed their configuration a little bit. Andrew's got himself up into P5, Twitchy into P4, Tez into P6. Oh, that releases some pressure. And as for the R4M boys, the second R4M boy in Sub-Zero, who actually hit the barrier on the exit of the chicane there through turn 17. Now uh, that shallow right-hander, so basically as we head out onto the straight, he hit the barrier there and it released a little bit of pressure from behind. Which was good because, you know, even though we technically our teammates, we're also technically not. And he definitely is not obliged to stay behind me. He could have overtaken if he really wanted to. And obviously I'm not in contact with him during the race. So I don't know what he's thinking. 
Uh, but yeah, that releases some pressure from behind. I'm able to just go eyes forward for a little bit because I'm only 1.2 seconds away from Tez. Of course, that slipstream range seven and a half tenths. I'm only sort of four or five tenths away from actually being in that slipstream with the front running pack there, which is beginning to back up at this particular stage. I think Atoms run wide at turn five there as the cars begin to scatter as he rejoins the track. I think he's uh, fallen victim to a pincer movement. Someone's in the barrier up ahead. I think that's Twitchy and that looks like they're three, four abreast heading through turn six. Well, that's, this is turn seven, isn't it? All, all the way on the exit there. Tez has got himself well into the fray. I bet he's licking his lips at the delicious prospect of all four of them driving off the track and him able to take a sensational second position, which obviously wouldn't be too bad at all. Twitchy runs a little bit wide through turn eight, which puts him slow on the exit here. Sub-Zero also is looking pretty racy, but he's not able to find a way past me on that particular occasion. We're now right on the back of this front running pack. I say front running pack, but technically I guess the front running pack is a pack of one with, uh, with Matthew McEwen way up the road. He's managed to actually just capitalise on all that argy-bargy happening behind him there. And he's able, he's been able to drive away and it's going to be really difficult to actually catch him at this particular stage. It looks like Tez is sending it down the inside of Atom. He tries to defend but ends up just going a little bit too deep, allowing Twitchy to look around the outside of turn 16. That uh, gives Twitchy the position and the gap's there for me as well. I head up the inside at turn 17 there and I'm pretty much able to drive clean past him on the straight. He's still got an opportunity to try and drive around the outside with a little bit of slipstream assistance from Twitchy heading up towards the braking zone for turn 1. But I've just got the inside, and the inside is king at turn one at Alsace because it can be a very understeery corner if you're out even half a car width too wide. So it's really no good for hanging around the outside there, but he's still in the slipstream as Twitchy's looking to head down the inside of Tez, putting them in a, probably a little bit of a better configuration, giving the faster driver in Twitchy the opportunity uh, for Tez to use the slipstream and sort of drive away up the road together as a pair. And I'm going to try and hitch onto the back of them, of course, but Atom's still very much so within the slipstream here. It's definitely not been the start of the race that I know that he wanted. Starting on pole with all of the fastest drivers in the region but right behind you is quite a daunting task and I definitely feel like I probably would have made the same mistakes if I qualified ahead of people that I sh really shouldn't have. This is a Really, this was a debate that sort of came up into my head as I sort of seen what happened to Atom. I was like, oh, obviously he'd be absolutely stoked about a pole position and anyone always celebrates a good pole position uh, when they hard earned and hard deserved it. But I think I would much rather qualify sort of where I feel like I sort of sit in terms of the pack. I definitely wouldn't want to grab someone's slipstream, qualify ahead of all the fast guys and just sort of get pushed and shoved, elbows out, just bullied I think is the right word there, out of the way and I think Atom's got himself much worse off than if he were to qualify sort of just behind maybe Matthew and Twitchy and Andrew perhaps. I think I think Atom probably would have had a much more successful race if, if he wasn't constantly sort of balked and pushed around a little bit by everyone around him. A little bit unfortunate for him but he absolutely deserved that pole position I was really happy to see him up there. But the rest of this race, oh dear, Atom has hit the barrier now too on the exit of the last turn, so it just puts him out of the back of the slipstream there, and it, of course I opened up the gap actually between myself and Sub-Zero, which even though I would like to see Sub-Zero do well as we're both bearing the R4M tag, that gap opening up behind me is actually good news for me. Alright, this is okay, I'd rather them just drive away. Uh, because I definitely just wanted to focus eyes forward rather than eyes forward and backward but as this race went on I just followed Tez and Twitchy a little bit uh, a little bit I say a lot I followed them for 100% of the time and that honestly is best case scenario for a time like this in the middle part of the race your goal is to just minimize your time loss race uh, cleanly, lap consistently, avoiding mistakes, and that is how you really make your big time gains. That's exactly what Matthew McEwen is doing to great effect. But up until this part of the race, Tez was looking pretty good in the back of, uh, uh, behind Twitchy rather. Goodness me, that could be taken out of context. But uh, anyway, he, um, Tez, unfortunately at this stage, is just looking like he's right on the fringes of Twitchy's slipstream, and you can see I'm sort of catching up to the back of him. And as we head through the chicane, now he hits the barrier. That is just horrific, that me. 
Oh dear, that's disgusting. But any, anyway, uh, off the back of Tez's mistake, I'm able to get up the inside at turn one. Tez actually comes with a nice reply to that particular manoeuvre. And he gets himself a beautiful little movement. Gets a switch back on the exit of turn one, which is actually a really neat little move to do. And he's got himself the outside for turn two, which is the inside for turn three. He tries to come across there, but there's a slight bit of overlap. I just feathered the throttle because I don't want to engage in a massive battle with Tez. The last thing I want is to actually come together and punt him off. That would be disastrous. Uh, we get a much better run through turn three there. So just bump drafting Tez up through turn four. Let's go, Tez. It was definitely time to just hunker down, eyes forward, try and catch the guys up ahead and I'm going to give him a bump draft and then a little bit of breathing room up towards turn 5 here. Tez has got to get himself into a rhythm and he can't do that with a pair of Atenza headlights uh, blinding him in his rear view mirror. So I've just backed off a little bit, given him a little bit of space. He's got to get back into the rhythm which can take half a lap or a lap or so to get really back into that groove. I'm not going to overtake him unless he makes a big mistake. Uh, but yeah, in terms of racing, I'm probably just going to bump draft him rather than actually try and overtake him. But right as we head through here, I make a mistake now. I just get a little bit too tight on that last apex of turn 8. And it just throws me a little bit wide, a little bit up further off the back of Tez than I would initially like. That's about four and a half tenths off the back of him now. As soon as it would click up to five tenths, that's when I start to worry about the slipstream range and falling out of it. Because as that slipstream becomes weaker, it's harder and harder to actually keep it as well so if we're sort of five six tenths behind him it's harder to stay in five or six tenths than it is to actually stay in two or three tenths because that slipstream as you're closer is a lot stronger twitchy's driving away uh, which is probably to be expected he's driving up uh, to be part of that battle for p2 it would be at this stage McEwen looks like he's definitely just going to run away with this one all the way to the end he's six and a half seconds up the road from where i am and twitchy is sort of not he's pretty much right within the slipstream range of I think it's Noodles, Noodles and Andrew, so Twitchy could be in for a P2 here. But as for Tez and I, we once again find ourselves on track together. We're just going to be using his slipstream here, uh, which, you know, in, normally in any normal circumstance would be a pretty good uh, case for saving fuel, but we haven't even talked about the strategy in this race. It's basically because there is zilch, zippity doo da in terms of strategy. zippity doo da um, it's a easy no-stop race. Old oh, Tez has run a little bit wide off the exit there, and that's just sort of compromised him into the following left-hander there. I think he's had to feather the throttle to actually meet that apex. I think that was a flash of the indicator as well, and I think he's going to slow up and let me by here, which is really nice of him at this particular stage. I think he probably felt as though he was making a couple of mistakes, and with him ahead and me behind, it probably wasn't the fastest configuration, the fastest orientation uh, in which for himself and myself to actually be in so he's given me an opportunity to go in ahead here so this is now my turn to try and get myself into a rhythm which with uh, which once again thank you Tez can take sort of half a lap or a lap or so to really get back down into the rhythm off the back of that move there I need a little bit of breathing room behind and Tez has given me three three and a half tenths there uh, which is really really good of him but before we were before we were talking about this exchange in position for P5, which has just occurred, we were talking about the strategy of the race, which is kind of funny because there is a zilch strategy in terms of uh, actually pit stops and uh, tyre changing and fuel saving because in what is a little bit of a unique quirk about this particular combination is that tyre wear and fuel use are actually on times one each which is definitely normally not something we see normally we see at least times two on the fuel and then maybe times four or times five on the tires to try and force a pit stop but i think this race from the outset from the desk of polyphony digital from the mind of kazanora yamuchi was always going to be a no stop with the one times one times because one times anything in 12 laps at alsace is not conducive to a pit stop which is interesting. It's definitely an all-out sprint race here. You don't even need to save tyres. You just set your brake balance and off you go. Uh, we're driving the Mazda Atenza, which is a four-wheel drive car, and four-wheel drive group four cars can tend to get a little bit understeer, which can cause a little bit of extra front tyre wear in comparison to the rear tyres. But even so, I think I've just got my brake balance set at like plus one or something, or plus two. I don't even remember, honestly. It might even be a plus four. Definitely not minus four, though. Definitely... Uh, anything towards the front is not what you want 
uh, because you're just going to exacerbate that understeer which you already get but yeah in terms of tie saving that's about it you're not going soft into corners you're definitely not fuel saving either if anything you want to rev the absolute nuts out of the car you want to rev the pistons up through the bonnet of this Tenza here today and that is how you get around this uh, that's how you get around this race as fast as you possibly can and that's sort of what makes this race a little bit difficult is because you're going full chat for 12 laps you're going absolutely flat stick for 23 24 minutes however long it is and it can be really difficult especially as you get towards the track edges of these grip limited corners these high speed corners uh, it can be so easy just to dip one wheel out onto the grass and that's curtains that's lights out for you my friend if you make a tiny mistake like that so you definitely have to do a lot of practice for a combination like this and that's exactly what we did we put in the time we put in the practice and we're going to put that uh, to great effect on this next coming lap which is going to be our fastest lap of the race so let's ride on board while we do so we're going to head out of the chicane one last time we're going to really basically just showcase how good this tune is we're of course running all the identical suspension all the damping all the geometry of uh, AMS dudes tune our gearbox is slightly different but that's sort of unintentional as far as I was aware this was completely dudes tune up until the point after the race where I discovered I actually had the wrong final drive on but that is a story for another day or story earlier in the video I think we've already talked about that but let's make sure we get all of these corners really, really good. These, this, this track is quite quirky in terms of uh, all of its corners. It, a lot of people actually thoroughly dislike this track, and I, I think it gets a bad rap personally. I think it's grossly underrated. I think it's a fantastic little circuit because we're actually marginally purple on Twitchy's lap of 58.7 there, so that bodes well for what this lap's going to be. Uh, but we'll see what happens as we get towards the end of the lap. But yeah, Alsace, I think it's I think it's hated upon too much. I think it's a nice little track. Yeah, it's difficult to get right. I'll give it that. It's difficult to extract the pace from. Um, you know, not not Dragon Trail seaside levels of difficult, but it is up there uh, trying to get the fastest lap. You're basically just optimising your line for all of these corners, and each corner sort of has its own quirks about it. And no two corners are the same on this particular track because it's on sort of a very hilly area in a region of France is where it's set. It's of course a fictional circuit, but it's based on a real village, and the village is of course called Alsace. So if Alsace in real life had a racetrack, this would be it. Is essentially uh, what they're trying to uh, communicate with the existing of this track in the game but yeah each each quarter has an elevation change or a dip or a trough or a valley you know a bump whatever a curb there's definitely lots to keep your eyes out around this particular track and I, I really like it for its flowing feeling it's one of the most flowing circuits in the game I feel but as we round this final turn there uh, we get a nice little bit of rotation as all this uh, I think it's the sensitive uh, diff gives it a nice bit of rotation on the throttle there's a 58.9 it's a really really quick race pace lap and as you can see uh, the fastest lap currently of the race is a 58.7 by twitchy and we've gone and done a 58.9 and that uh, twitchy is a mid seven I'm a high nine so that's basically two uh, two and a half uh, two and a half tenths of difference between myself and twitchy twitchy an esports driver one of the fastest drivers in the region I'm only two and a half tenths off him but anyway, we've set our fast lap of the race now. we still got to pay attention to Tez here because he's still four tenths behind. He's ready, and he's ready and raring to go to pick up any pieces of a mistake that I may make on the exit of this corner. You can clip the barrier, or you can clip the grass and end up in the barrier. On the exit of this corner, you can clip the curb or ride the curb incorrectly and it can flick you to the inside barrier. You don't want to run off on the outside like Brocky did on the opening of the race because, as you can see, Brocky's been nowhere, although he's actually got himself back up into P7. He's right behind Tez now, so we've probably got to be careful about him. He's making an ascent back through the field. You can clip the grass there and bin it, and then you can clip the grass in the exit here and bin it as well. But as we head through this corner, that gap to Tez is about four tenths, or three and a half tenths as we head through the mid part of the corner there. But as we head out onto the exit, I think Tez has made a mistake halfway through that corner. That gap's opening up there. That's about six tenths. As we head up towards the hairpin, we have to get a really good hairpin in order to break that toe to Tez because if he continues to get that slipstream heading up towards the closing stage of the race, there's definitely a bigger likelihood that he may go for the move. But as we head up the hill through turn 12, breaking news, Tez has lost the slipstream. He's eight and a half tenths behind me. He's one tenth shy of being within the slip. 
and it was definitely looking that Tez was maybe on the back foot a little bit in this particular race, which can happen from time to time. It's really easy to sort of, I, I don't know what the right terminology would be, but sort of get into the race and struggle a little bit, feel like you're not performing, get frustrated with yourself and end up making more mistakes than you perhaps should have. Uh, but that is the end of Tez, unfortunately, for this race. One second behind me, it's going to be really difficult to try and catch that back up, especially now without the slipstream. And that's exactly what happened. He didn't then go on to lose any further positions. He's still 1.7 behind me, so it's not like he dropped like a stone, but it's just he didn't have the slipstream assistance anymore, and he wasn't able to mount a fight for me to finish in P5, which, as we come across the line, we confirm that to be true. P5 in our last online championship in Gran Turismo Sport. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, I do not think I could have done any better than that. Obviously quite happy with that one, given the strength of drivers up the top of the, the grid here to, get, to go on and then gain a couple of positions. Earn myself 279 points. I will take that as the final farewell result in any online championship in Gran Turismo Sport. The next online championship will be in Gran Turismo 7, which uh, as of right now when I'm recording comes out in less than two days, so obviously really exciting there. Uh, but as a final little, uh, as, as the final race for the online championship, I'm really, really satisfied with that result to be my last. Obviously, big congratulations to the Distinct Boys for taking out top three in the championship. Uh, but I think I ended up finishing in P7 or something. So a top 10 in the last championship, I'll take that any day of the week. The Distinct Boys, P1, P2, P3 on their Distinct debut. That's obviously a very strong showing for them. Hopefully they can continue such form in the future, heading into the next era of Gran Turismo. But there's not much else to debrief there. Really happy with that result. Congratulations to uh, Matthew McEwen for winning that race as well. Winning the last top split race. Well done to him. But that's going to finish up this video today. So do hit the like button if you enjoyed. And do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and streams from me. Do leave a comment as well. Questions, comments and constructive criticism as always. Very much appreciated. But that's going to be the end of this one today. And that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.